Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. Streaming Live. It's Irmina and Nelson. We discuss about travels, traveling and all experience and knowledge we have about this and particularly my guest. So before, uh, right before this, uh, the song, uh, we discovered, we learned that Nelson is a huge fan of cycling and he's pretty experienced with traveling. Like this is his life, basically this is his passion. And I, I just wanted to, to, to ask you Nelson about some practicalities. Um, for example, are you like, how to say, uh, a lonely driver when you're traveling? Are you rather alone or with someone who accompanies you usually? And then how to prepare yourself before like some like nice, you know, travel I want to do uh, to really have like a great experience. What to do before or maybe I should not do anything, just be spontaneous. What do you think? Well, uh, but if I'm uh, travel alone, that, that uh, mostly I have done like three big trips in my life: uh, China, England, Norway, and this uh, bike trip. And all three were different. China was with the school; it was authorized organized. We were 20, I think, 19, 21, something like that. And in the temple, and then I went uh, along with another three. We were a group of four, the closest ones. England and Norway was alone. And that was a trip that started to change everything. I knew I liked trips and I was a bit uh, thoughtful about my life, what to do, and I just decided to travel alone. And I was absolutely convinced I wanted to make that trip alone. Uh, that changed a lot. I had a lot of time to think, some experiences. It was a relaxing trip, not like full of adventures. It was mostly full of uh, moments to think. Reflection. Like in the right. in the fjords, you know, one kilometer tall in this cliff. You look down, you say, oh, I can die. Oh, God. And th that's a perfect, peaceful moment to think. I came back from that one saying, you know what, this is what I want to do. Like, not on the weekends, not uh, some day working 20 years and then travel. No, I want to leave traveling. And then I made the bike trip uh, with uh, my colleague Leon. So I have made like the alone one, the one with a lot of people and the one with uh, used to. All of them are nice and they all depends on the whole idea of the trip. In China with the school, it was a school. It was really important to be with them. And in Norway, England and Norway, it was time for me to think. And the adventure one, it was time to, I don't know, discuss about any kind of things with Leon. Sure. Um, how to get prepared for them uh, depends on the moment and what is uh, what I feel I want to do. Uh, for example, uh, for China or the bike trip, those are really related to physical condition. Uh, China, I was training eight hours a day from Monday to Saturday. Uh, it was really painful. Sunday was for crying out of pain. <laughs> Extremely painful. And we were sleeping in a table. We didn't even have a bed. We just have a one table the width of your shoulder so you couldn't move to the side. So you fall or you hug the other one. Because it was like some kind tables. of uh, punishment for a Spanish uh, student, <laughs> the trip to China. <laughs> No, I don't know. Or it was a, a reward for you? Uh, it was a reward, a painful reward. But I especially noticed how amazing it was when I came back and I recovered from all that pain. Because it, at the end of this uh, temple, I was absolutely uh, on pain everywhere. It was a bit hard the last, the last days. But when I recovered from that, it was like, my life is different now. Now I know about sports. Now I'm a good sportist. Before I was just doing stupid things. and. Uh, And then the bike trip I was not training eight hours a day. It was cycling eight hours a day, every day. So Cy wait, wait, wait. Let's make it clear. Cycling eight hours per, per day. Uh, on average, it depends. Yeah, the Longer days or shorter days. Probably more than eight hours. It depends on the day or the distance. Some distances were... I think the shortest one was... Uh, uh, 40 kilometers could be. And the longest one, 135. So the 135, that was much longer than eight hours. That distance, does it need like uh, just a physical condition or I would say maybe like a mental uh, force? It's mostly mental and motivation. because it's, uh, it's endurance. 
You don't need to be super strong or have some special skills. You just have to endure all of that. And physically, that's not the hardest one, but mentally, sometimes you have to have a lot of patience. Okay, so despite the physical uh, preparation, which is um, kind of also the first thing which comes to our mind when uh, when we talk about like choosing bike as your way of transport, but um, Besides that, would you rather rather say that it's you know one should be like pretty spontaneous for things which happen or like are you rather a type of a good planner with you know books and guides oh, no. and <laughs> thoughts and nights <laughs> spent on googling hotels and I don't know campings. Oh, uh, I wish I was good planning stuff, but no, I'm a disaster. So I I just collect ideas and. More or less, I may have some scheme of what should I do, but then you are really flexible on everything that is going on at the moment. Especially in the bike trip, you have to be really flexible. That's another thing with the bike, it forces you to be flexible. Stuff may happen, like a thunderstorm. So, you know, if it's just raining, you get wet, but if there are lightnings, you don't want to get hit by a lightning, so you have to change your trip. So what do you do when the storm starts? Oh, you just uh, search for a place, uh, some shelter. Sometimes it's fine. It's hard to find a shelter, and eventually you discover that the shelter was in front of you all the time. On the meantime, you are completely surrounded by thunders, and then you finally stop, just to realize that it's not going to stop. The rain, I mean. And eventually you have to move anyway. And you get wet. <laughs> and lost. Like, You get lost. By the way, I make the bike trip without GPS or maps. That's another thing I'm really proud of. This one, I'm going to give credit. Uh, this is uh, Leon's merit. He's really good with navigation. I'm a disaster. I get lost. I so how did you easy. manage, guys? Uh, how did, like, is Leon capable to um, follow the stars? Or how, <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage without maps? Well, the stars trick helps sometimes, actually. No way. Yeah, there's eventually some days we were riding in the night because it got late, and, you know. And, like, where is the north? Um, that helps. And with the stars, it's good to know. He knows, I don't. Uh, even with the sun, sometimes I get confused. I was one day, he just asked me, just kidding, come on, I trust you, you can do. Where is the north? And it was like, there. And he <laughs> said, no, no, it's not there, it's there. Oh, oh, it's true. So, yeah, I get lost everywhere. We did it... Um, Every time uh, at night, wherever we were staying, we just checked the internet, uh, Naviki, a website uh, from his university. Uh, it's a bike planner, bike route planner. We just checked the way, how to get from point A from, to point B, and he just wrote everything. All right. Like in the kilometer number two, turn right. In the street, this, turn left. And just writing All everything right. in so a he, notebook. He also like increased his... Um he gained some skills for drawing yeah. right and oh yeah we draw some a nice plans and, and we are still trying to draw things we have some bets on that but mostly it was just writing eventually we made also drawing some of some of the pieces there were pieces that the really funny ones that were like uh, after 20 trees turn right <laughs> those were crazy of course we got lost in those And many times we were taking a rural path that they change. And the data on the website yes. might be just two or three months old, but this is rural paths. And sure. the agricultural people, they are changing them all the time. So we also got lost in those. So I guess you you kind of had to learn that, uh, yeah, I mean, being flexible and like open and spontaneous, yeah. it's like basic, well, yes, right? To, this is yeah. actually what makes you experience things yeah. because... Uh, and also, as we said, you, um, your colleague uh, Leon, uh, like, was working hard on his uh, drawing skills. And what else uh, did you learn? Like, how? I mean, not only from this uh, uh, cycling uh, adventure with cycling on the way to Poland, but um, like for you personally, how do you benefit from from traveling in yes, yes. all kind of senses? There is a one lesson I really like. I came up with this uh, particular thought uh, at, by the end of the trip. I just realized that plans are not that necessary. Uh, there, is some, uh, there is always happening, something happening. Plans may get broke. Eventually, what I just realized is that I have to have a goal, not a plan. 
Uh, I just have a goal. Like, I want to arrive to this place, whatever it takes, and <laughs> wish me luck, because it's usually a disaster, but I do arrive to. And on the plans, you just get a scheme of more or less what you should be doing and a massive flexibility. Massive flexibility. Sometimes it's impressive. But the goal, that's strict. I want to do this, whatever it takes. And that's something I make from the bike trip of, I want to arrive here, to that I can take it out. Like, I want to make my life on traveling. And let's see, have ideas. But it's uh, not the most uh, common thing to do. And sure. <laughs> It's it's really interesting what you were saying, and I I think, I mean maybe it's uh, like not time to make the conclusions of our talk yet, for sure not. But I I just have impression that what you were saying, um, like you can one like you can also like implement it in your life, right? Yeah. Th that what you gain, it sounds like a really uh, kind of universal truth, right? This thing about realizing your goal. And um, actually, I uh, I wanted to ask you because uh, about traveling, like, I was interested to know what is your perspective a bit, and we will come back to this. But I wanted to ask you if you would agree uh, on some like statements or quotes which are um, which I found as uh, this kind of uh, reflections about traveling and statements you learn that. Because people say that from traveling you learn, like you actually, yep. you know, you, you have a better understanding. And that's what you are saying. But um, what if I say that, uh, um, okay, for example, this one, because I have a list and I can pick some of them. Uh, everyone everywhere basically wants the same thing. You, having the experience from different cultures and different places. Do you think that this is kind of true about the human beings. To an extent, uh, yes. It depends on what you call the same things. I mean, we all want uh, food, shelter and love. But all, from all cultures. That's something you want. Uh, then you may have some particularities, like what kind of food you want. People like spicy or not spicy, <laughs> whatever. Uh, what kind of love or what kind of shelter. There are people that want the biggest house ever and people that just want a bed or whatever. And that's like primary needs, and those are universal. Then you may have uh, secondary needs, and also uh, manias, styles of how to sure. fulfilling these uh, needs. The um, cultural thing comes in these points, in how to fulfill the primary needs that everybody needs, and secondary stuff. Secondary stuff is like, do you want an iPhone? <laughs> That's completely secondary. There are cultures that want iPhone, cultures that don't. Uh, you know, it's getting really mainstream to get to one more. <laughs> uh, so, um, primary needs, yeah, but on second, secondary needs, that change. Uh, for example, in some cultures, um, the social aspect is more important. In other cultures, the religion is really important. In others, the politics are really important. And others also the the way of life, like what is a correct thing to do in this society, that changed a lot. And sometimes we want to do what for us is the normal thing, but you are in a different planet, surrounded sure. by different things. You get shocked, and they may get shocked by your behavior. But yeah, I I like what you said. That it's like, you know, it would be easy to say that yes, everyone, everyone everywhere wants the same thing because we are all human beings but it's much more complex than that yeah. right we all want food but which one yeah. yeah that's i think that's kind of a nice nice metaphor about this and as you've done like kilometers by bike this question might be kind of um i think interesting for you would you agree um with the statement that the um, pos uh, possession thinks owns you so meaning the less you have the happy the happier you are well uh, that reminds me of one anecdote in the bike trip uh, you cannot carry all your stuff you know you have to carry it actually it's not going on the car and the car is doing the thing you are doing it and especially if you're going uphill and your luggage is heavy that's not nice 
So you have to pack the really tight with really what you will need. And then I remember during the trip, uh, we were sleeping at the cat surfing. We were being hosted by a lot of people, and usually all of them were asking us like, "That is really all your luggage we're having? Wow, that's really little. We need much more." But then, then there was one in Sviecie, here in in Poland, uh, north of Poland, a bit north of Bydgoszcz. These girls, they just uh, ask us like. Is that your luggage? We were like, yeah, yeah, I know it's little. And they were like, no, it's too much. We were like, what? <laughs> really? Too much? I mean, my friend's luggage uh, was uh, 12 uh, kilograms, 11, 12, and mine was um, 13, maybe. And they just say that it was a lot of uh, luggage. And I actually, I, I wanted to throw half of it. I was like, oh God, next trip, I will just go with <laughs> two or three kilograms. I yeah. feel depressed after that. That's very interesting because I'm, now I'm having this kind of thought that when I go for a trip um, somewhere for a week, I take like 20 kilograms <laughs> and still I'm not satisfied. And um, yeah, so... Uh, oh, 13 kilograms for nine weeks. Yeah. So did you feel, um, um, like how did you feel having that limited amount of things you could carry with you, you could have mm. with you? Like, does it, did it bother you somehow or it was a freedom? Uh, it gives you some freedom to have as little things as possible. I remember one discussion with my mother. I came here to Krakow with this uh, small luggage, but you know I was going to live here for one year, and especially you know winter, I will need much more things than that. So the deal was that once here and once I got the flat, my mother would send me the suitcase. And I remember just telling her, don't send me everything I have. I just want one suitcase. If it doesn't fit in the suitcase, I don't want it. Nope, because then I will have to move. And what I'm going to do with two suitcases? One is already heavy. So sure, it's a bit scary to have too many things, right? I mean, it's somehow uh, limiting you, or it makes you a bit like, attached to the place. Um, to, I think. Um, Economical meaning, mm. yeah, it attacks you a lot. You have to do something with it eventually. If you are going to stay in the same place, you fill it with things. But if you are going to move, you have to take all the things. And that is a bit exhausting. So if the less things you have to move, the easier it will be. So keep it to the what you really need to move later. Keep it simple. Yeah. Also in life, I think it works. Yeah, at least, you know, call it laziness. <laughs> uh, you, I, you don't want to go with um, a lot of... Uh, luggage or to pay for it. Just be lazy. Don't have too many things to move later. Be lazy and smart and the, the yeah. same way, I would add. 